All right, a couple of things we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to give you a couple of notes first, and then we'll get right into Matthew chapter 6. But I want you to think in line with a couple of things. First off, <clears throat> the greatest tragedy in life is not death. <clears throat> it's a life without purpose. If you have a life without purpose, you're dead before you ever die. You just walk around dead. You need a life with purpose. Jesus came to give us a purpose, right? He came to give us life, but he came to give us a life with purpose. Now, <clears throat> you know, the name of the ministry has been John G. Lake Ministries, and we've shortened that to JGLM. Um, <clears throat> I'm ex-military, so everything's an acronym. Everything goes down to initials. makes it easier. <clears throat> we have so many initials, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, it's, we have the DHT, we have SWAT, we have... IAC, we have DLIC, which is the church. I mean, just we got all these initials for everything. It's just you really need a program to keep up with it all. <clears throat> but years ago, when I looked at JGLM, I saw it on like on these things here, and I saw just the words written up or just the letters. <clears throat> and it's like I saw, I didn't see John G. Lake Ministries, I saw JGLM, but what I saw after it was JGLM, Jesus Gives Life Meaning. <clears throat> And I've used that a lot of times, and, and that's the way I think of JJLM. JJLM is just the vehicle. It, it, it's not important in and of itself. It's just the vehicle. But it is important that Jesus gives life meaning. It is important that he gives life a mission. And that if you ever get a hold of his mission, you'll get a mission. <clears throat> and so, as I said, the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but it's a life without purpose. The greatest challenge in life is to know what to do. All right? I mean, that's the greatest challenge. What should I do? What, what do I devote my life to? Many people just devote them li their lives to themselves. And then at the end of their life, they find out that they've wasted their life. <clears throat> the greatest mistake in life is being busy but not effective. It's a big mistake. Always busy, always active. Many times you can tell if a person doesn't have peace, they'll get real busy because they, they try to keep their mind busy so that they don't think about the peace that they wish they had. <clears throat> the greatest failure in life is to be extremely successful in the wrong thing. Think about that. <clears throat> to be extremely successful in the wrong assignment for your life, in the wrong thing about life, to devote yourself to something that's wrong but be so good at it that you excel at it, which makes it very hard to back out of it. Now, the single greatest success in life comes from the correct use of time. Time is the most valuable thing we have. It's, it's uh, <clears throat> you know, not unending. And the correct use of time comes from correct priorities. So I'm just kind of taking you step by step here. So if you're going to use time correctly, you have, to use, you have to have the right priorities or you'll waste time. Correct priorities always come from aligning yourself with God's purposes. Always. Now, I'm, I'm big on reverse engineering. It's like I see the overall picture and then we come back from that on how to get there step by step. When I was looking at some of these things and trying to help, what we do here is we, we try to help people in their own lives, individual lives, but at the same time we try to help them. And the way that we help them is by getting them in line with God's purposes. And one of those main things is that once you, like as I said, once you find God's purpose, everything starts to come into alignment. <clears throat> Jesus said in, in the original Greek, it, it says it quite different than it says it in the King James <clears throat> but in the original Greek, he said, if you will lay down your lower life with its goals, ambitions, objectives, he said, then I will give you my higher life with its goals, objectives, and ambitions. That's the one thing when I talk with people, especially unsaved people, people that aren't walking with God, at, at however you want to call that, 
it's amazing because when you start talking about walking with God, they automatically think of rules. They think, well, you know, if I do that, I'll have to stop doing this, I'll have to stop doing that. And, you know, it's just rules and, you know, don't do this and don't do that. And I'll try to tell them, you know, if you, if you really hook into God, if you really get a hold of his heart, it's no, you don't think do's and don'ts. You just, you just love. You just love people. You love God. And you love people because you love God. And if you didn't love God, it's pretty hard to love people. But if you love God, it gets easier to love people. Now, one of the keys to loving people is to be dead. To die to yourself. Because if you don't die to yourself, people are always going to hurt you. They're always going to offend you. They're always going to do something. But once you make that commitment that, you know what, I'm dead. It's no longer I to live, but Christ who lives in me. People really don't bother you anymore. You know? dead, dead men never get bothered by people. You know, you can walk up to a casket at a funeral and look in there and go, boy, you're just as ugly now as you ever were. <laughs> you know? And that dead person ain't going to say a word to you. you know? You're not going to offend them. They're not going to get mad. You can't hurt them. It's good to live dead. Amen? And that's where I think a lot of people just never, they don't, don't ever get there. You know, basically Christianity has come now to a point where it's all about band-aids. Fix people. Make me a better person. Jesus didn't come to make you a better person. He came to kill you. All right? He came so you could die so you could have his life. <clears throat> 